segment we have in the BOS system, the business operating system, is the 530 grid. And if you're online with us at mastermind-seminars.org, in the upper right-hand corner, there's a yellow banner that says fourfold, that says fourfold. Click on that, and when you click on that, it's going to pull up the roadmap to what we're doing today. So we just, say, we just had uh, box, uh, uh, box 10 on your fourfold, which is the uh, DNA for people, and you can see how um, people, uh, the different shapes, the analytic, the driver, the uh, expressive, and the amiable, and they're the things that cause them the most frustration. That's in box 10. And if you're following along, if you're not, you can jump on now, mastermind-seminars.org, and you can go into box 11, and it's going to show you the 530 grid. Uh, and I'm excited to have Rosanna Borsmo, who's going to be coming on and sharing the 530 grid and how that generates massive referrals to us. Rosanna is in, uh, has an awesome women's group, and, and, and uh, Rosanna, maybe you could tell us a little bit about that group and then go right into uh, um, generating massive leads through the 530 grid. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so the awesome women's group is held at on uh, Mondays at 11.30 Central Time. Um, it is for women. Um, we do have uh, special speakers, um, including men, that get on the call to encourage women in the business world and trying to combine efforts that they're doing within the, their workplace and at home and to make things more efficient. And so um, I welcome anyone that would like to join that. Um, it's only 30 minutes and it is recorded. So if you're unable to attend at that time, you can also get um, a, uh, a recording of that. If you have questions, feel free to uh, touch base with me on that. Um, what we're talking about today is the DNA for business and um, how we want to generate a large quantity of referrals. And last month we convert prospects faster. And so now what? Um, we have the prospects who are now becoming our clients. Now what do we do with that? So we have already made the sale and we have a client. So we're moving into something we call the servicing, which is area four, which is making sure that our client is happy, making sure that they're getting what they need, making sure that we know them very well, and using Cheryl's idea of the personalities and understanding our clients in the best way will help us to go ahead and to accomplish that goal. Um, if you're listening to your client and what they want and how they're, um, what they're happy with, you can use that to ask them for referrals. Um, don't be afraid to ask for referrals. Uh, have the energy of a five-year-old. They don't stop. They come back. When you don't ask it, you don't get the answer the way they want it, they ask it a different way. They are relentless. And as long as your client is very happy with you, it, it doesn't hurt to be relentless. What do you do with once the information is come to you and you have the results? What do you have to do with that? Well, you go back to the marketing in area one where you identify those targets and you help them deliver a message to those particular referrals. If they're calling you and asking you for your business, that is the best because you don't have to call them. You already have an in. You've saved time. Why not ask your clients for referrals? I think that would just be you know, a waste of time to just go ahead and you know try to get it yourself when you can go ahead and just ask your clients. I'm guessing every person that you know knows three to five other people that are making similar decisions that they just made themselves. And that's called the cluster principle that sometimes you will hear in the DNA for life um, natural laws. Um, I would also encourage you to go ahead and understand that business people, they know a lot more than three to five other people. They have 500 people that they may know that may have you know, similar challenges in their business. And so it's always important to ask people for referrals. Um, once you get those referrals, you want to make sure you're putting them in a system and you're marketing that, that system and so that you can catch and follow up on them. Do not let them drop. Those are the best type of things to get is the referrals because you've already got it. And if you don't do well with the referrals, the clients they referred that referred them 
um, they might not refer any more business to you. That might be a challenge. If you do want to make sure you're following up on the clients that have been referred to you and don't let them fall. Um, I would also say that you want to make sure that you're following um, your successes and getting back to people and making sure that you they, they know the business and they know what you're doing. And to make sure that you're always, always um, checking um, with the client that you're working with to be a good, continue to be good servicing, even if, especially after they've referred something, because they could come back to the person they referred to and say, well, you know, on second thought, you always want to make sure you're servicing your client very well so that you don't lose the referral that they just gave you. Um, if you're having trouble asking for referrals, I would say get back to your inner child as it was mentioned in a couple segments ago about Ratatouille. Um, yeah, get back to your inner child. Don't be fearful. I mean, what is it going to hurt? I mean, like Cheryl said, the worst they can do is say no. And you have other clients, you can ask them for referrals and you can come back and ask in a different way. Or maybe wait a little longer for your clients to be happier with what you're doing and then you can come back and ask again. So the more referrals you get, the more clients you get, the more, more referrals you can get from those clients. So it can continue to be a nice, very healthy for you. Um, let's see here. Servicing, yes, we talked about that, so I guess we've got that. So I am understanding that the best way to get information from your clients is to make sure you're servicing them well. And the best way to go ahead and get referrals is to make sure you're servicing your clients and then to, that you follow up on the referrals and then you continue to go ahead and follow the system that you started out to get the first client. Always follow the system. Stop whining, do the system, and you'll do great. Any questions? Hey, Ro Rosanna. Um, so is this system that you're talking about, does this work for other things besides just, you know, finding new business? I mean, would it work for something like, say, um, finding um, great team members to work in your company, like recruiting? Yes, especially if your client has seen how your team members that you have are working together and you say, you know, that's a really great company to work for. You know, if you're looking for a job, you might want to check out Tanglewood or you might want to check out whoever else you're talking to. You might want to check them out. And it's especially important for the client to see how well your team members are working together and following up on you as a client. Great. Thank you. So, Rosanna, what specific boxes in the 530 grid relate to generating a large quantity of referrals? Well, um, box number seven under area four servicing, the first box, it says ask for referrals. And then I say the next one that you would probably want to do is once you've asked for referrals, you want to make sure that you're tracking them. So I go back to box number three and make sure you're tracking them and you've got them done well and not dropped. Um, I'd also make sure that when you're asking the referrals, you're asking the key questions of the new referrals, just like you did with the clients that you worked with. And so you're just going back to the very beginning of how you got the client, but you have one step ahead of yourself because you've already got the foot in the door. Great. Thanks, Rosanna. I got a question, Rosanna. This is Kevin. Um, tell me about box 12 and how that can impact my my business. I see it right here on the 530 grid. Feed successes into one, two, and three. Can, can you can you uh, elaborate on that for me? Well, if you're making sure that you're um, always taking and tracking how well you did with the client and how they are happy with you, then you can go ahead and feed them back into identifying the, identifying the targets, and you can go ahead and develop a message for that particular um, target. And then after that, you go ahead and you track those leads. So that's the one, two, and three as far as I understand. Now, maybe Mark has a, a better uh, suggestion on that. I am not sure.
Mark, would you like to comment on that, or are we good? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, those are what Rosanna said was all true. Um, you can also, what you're looking at doing is you're looking at taking, like when you find out why you're losing prospects, box 13, sales, so like I'm not converting them, they're saying no. You can go back into your servicing, find a customer that had a similar type of way of thinking, but overcame that way of thinking, capture that success, and then so you've captured the success based on data from 13, and then you're driving that testimony back up into your marketing message, which will generate more and better leads. You're then also taking it and driving that message up into your, your strategic strike, which will improve your pressure point analysis. So rather than closing one out of 10 leads, you could convert two out of 10 leads. So one strategic place testimony can go ahead and double your sales and increase your profit by 500%. It's frightening and exciting how just one little type of thing can do it. Presenting solutions and then also feeding that back in to your key referral partners. In addition to that, let's say you had 100 customers. Based on the 80-20 rule, so when we look at the natural DNA for life, that'll be the next topic here. Um, based on the 80, 20, 90, 10 rule, 397, three out of the 100 will probably refer you 97% of your referrals. What if you took those three, you captured those three through a media um, technology, and you were able to clone their thinking and then inject that thinking back into all your other customers. What if your other 97 customers learned to think like the three customers that referred you business? So it's an NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. So it's helping people to think in a different way and reprogramming their minds to think in a different way. When we do that with Box 12, Kevin, it brings magic to everything that we do. Wow, thank you. That that's outstanding. Rosanna, thank you. That was fantastic. Thank you so much for that uh in depth analysis on the BOS system in terms of the five thirty grid for the, the DNA for business and how that is going to help us generate a map. I hope people are taking notes. I hope you're you're listening closely. I hope you plan on listening to the rebroadcast that's going to be really important for you to do.